This is brought to us by the Brigada Escuela 2021 and the School Disaster Risk Reduction Management of the Ilocos Norte College of Arts and Trades. Live po tayo ngayon sa mga Facebook pages ng Ilocos Norte College of Arts and Trades at maging sa The Labor at Ang Palihan. Hindi rin masama kung lahat po tayo ishare natin ang ating programa sa ating mga sariling Facebook pages. Salamat po. Kaya naman, please don't forget to invite our parents and school children maging ng mga iba pa nating kakilala na dumalo at manood dito sa ating programa sapagkat tiyak na mapupuno ng kaalaman ng ating puso at isipan dito sa mensahe na ilalahad sa atin ng ating panakuhing pandangal sa ating programa. Just to give you a brief introduction of today's activity, given the rising concerns about students' mental health, we are conducting this Mental Health Awareness Virtual Forum, dubbed as a healthier mindset in the new normal. Ito ay bilang bahagi pa rin ng ating 2021 Brigada Escuela where we bring awareness about issues and ensures that students, together with their families, are given mental and psychosocial support services to help them cope with the impact of the pandemic. So now, welcome to all of you present in our virtual seminar. I am Baby Rodel Sabino Ramos Dakiwag, once a COVID-19 patient now recovering, and finding this will help me address the anxieties and the issues I have gone through and will help me find better understanding of today's mindset in the new normal. To begin with, I would like to acknowledge the presence of everyone in the administration, headed by the school principal four, Mrs. Shirley Kadai Absunod, the assistant principal two, Mrs. Veronica Rabang, and the different units of the department of the administrative department, rather, and their respective heads. May I also acknowledge the teaching force representing the departments of our school, the languages department headed by Sir Jacinto Pasqua, head teacher six for English, and Mrs. Margaret Bumanglag, teacher three in OIC for the Filipino department. The Araling Panlipunan and ESP department under the supervision of Dr. Michelle Bagawisan, at the same time the school disaster management committee supervising official. The Science Department, headed by Dr. Lovelia Agkawili, Head Teacher 6. The Mathematics Department, headed by Mrs. Amiros A. Arieta, Teacher 3 and the OIC of the same department. The TVE TLA Department, headed by Mr. Rezi Yakuna, Head Teacher 3, and the non-teaching staff of the Ilocos Norte College of Arts and Trades. Of course, I will not forget to welcome, most especially our parents, students, benefactors, and among others who are joining us today in this forum. Again, welcome and good morning to all of you. As we continue, may we now hear from our school principal, Mrs. Shirley Kadai Agsunod, for her opening remarks. <music> A year and seven months today, September 18, 2021, we are facing this trying time, the pandemic time, the coronavirus time in which thousands of lives have been lost. Millions of people have been affected and billions of people are still struggling not to be affected by this unseen attack of this worldwide enemy. Focusing on ourselves and finding ways to use the time that is now available are a great way to take care of our health. We need to stay informed with the latest information on coronavirus. With the trying times that we have been experiencing, many of us have been forced to adjust to a new normal. Parents have done homeschooling with their children. Families and friends physically isolating themselves, donning a face mask, wearing a face shield, applying alcohol, and wiping down groceries 
after a stress-filled visit to stores or groceries. While these changes have been jarring, it is very important to remember the world is facing a pandemic and in many places across the world, people are following similar lockdowns, shutdowns, or physical distancing. We have to look at this by putting on perspective that to win the war against COVID-19, we need to develop a coping mindset. We need to cope with the challenges of so much changes and to view the situation through a lens of acceptance. I do hope that our simple move to orient your ways and how to seek awareness about the issues and students' mental health and to ensure students together with our parents, with their parents, to have a healthier mindset during the new normal will go a long, long way. Because we value our health and we know very well that health is wealth. Have a good day, everyone. Our guest of honor speaker, our FDP viewers, and some participants. Be safe and healthy always. Welcome, welcome to this Mental Health Awareness Webinar. ma'am for your overwhelming support on the different activities we are conducting in line with the 2021 Brigada Escuela. To formally open this program ladies and gentlemen please join us for the Philippine National Anthem and the Doxology. Mga kababayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Gaya ng iyong 
Sa pagmamataas upang maiwaksi ang lupit at dahas At sa mahang lumikha ng pamaya ng payapa Sa kalikasan kabuhayan Kanya hat paniniwala Siya nawa Siya nawa Siya nawa Siya Welcome back to our forum this morning, and I am happy also to acknowledge the presence of today's guest of honor and speaker in the person of Ms. Sharid Shandabi Aguilar, a registered psychometrician and a registered guidance counselor at the same time. One of the main challenges each of us is facing during the current COVID-19 pandemic is how to maintain our mental and emotional health. Change has been rapid and widespread, causing many of us to feel unsafe and uncertain. As we come to realize back to normal may no longer exist. And the big question, how can we maintain our mental and emotional health in the new normal? Friends, ladies and gentlemen, here's to introduce our guest of honor and speaker who is most eligible to share us our thought about the answer to the big question. Please pay attention to Sir Brian Samuel Ramos, Teacher 3, for the introduction of our guest speaker. the debonair head of our school, Mrs. Shirley C. Agsunod, and of course, not to forget to mention Mrs. Veronica Rabang, to all the members of the faculty and the administrative staff of Ilocos Norte College of Arts and Trades, all the participants of this webinar, good morning to all. With all my pride and honor to introduce to you a very humble person, yet a woman of substance, whom we choose to be our guest of honor and speaker for today's webinar. During her formative years, she had her primary schooling at San Nicolas Elementary School, San Nicolas Ilocos Norte in 2005 and graduated as the class valedictorian. She went to Mariano Marcos State University Science High School for the secondary or for her secondary and graduated in 2019. Our speaker is a cum laude graduate from St. Louis University in Baguio City with a degree Bachelor of Science in Psychology. She is a holder of the degree Master of Science in Guidance and Counseling and graduated as cum laude. This qualified her to take the licensure examination for guidance counselors and psychometricians, which she passed in 2016 and in 2019, respectively. 
As a member of the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association, she got her stint at St. Louis University in 2014 as full-time guidance counselor, a faculty of the psychology department, and a psychometrician. Currently, she is employed at the Mariano Marcus State University graduate program or a member or a faculty in the undergraduate and graduate programs, a guidance counselor and the chief of the psychological testing center. After establishing her integrity in the profession as a guidance counselor and a psychometrician, she had extended her expertise and served as a speaker to some government institutions or agencies such as the Department of Education, the Philippine National Police, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, and to top universities in our country like Ateneo de Manila and de La Salle, to name a few. With her charm and wit, she has always been an inspiration to her family, especially to her parents. Mr. Edgar Aguilar and Mrs. Arlene Bayang Aguilar. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now present to you our speaker, a native of Barangay 18 San Nicolas, Ilocos Norte, a registered guidance counselor, a psychometrician, Ms. Sharid Shondi B. Aguilar. <music> Thank you, Sir Brian, for that <laughs> introduction. I'm not used to getting introduced that, that way, but thank you. Thank you still, sir. Um, good morning. I'm seeing 168 participants already in Facebook, and I, was, uh, I learned a while ago that it's a combination of teachers and uh, parents and students. Good morning po, um, to our... Um, Ilocos Norte College of Arts and Trades family. Thank you for having me. It's such, it's such an honor to be here. Uh, thank you, Mom Shirley, uh, for, for um, approving to be, uh, for me to be invited here. Uh, my papa used to bring me there during summer, okay, for speech clinic, sa math clinics, ganyan. So um, your school has a, a significant role in my formative years. So, salamat po uh, for investing in me. And ayon, my papa is also uh, teaching there and is watching uh, with us. So, he's mainly responsible for the person who's talking right now. So, <laughs> there. Um, yeah. So, before I start with my talk, let me share my screen. Ano? All right. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen, ladies and gentlemen? All right. So I will be talking about mental health awareness today. I cannot count, okay, kung gano ka um, kadalas ko itok to since the pandemic. So um, I'm tasked to talk about a, a healthier mindset in the new normal that is applicable both to 
our teachers, to our parents, and um, our students. So I hope that I will be able to shed light ano, um, in, in this um, uh, mental health na aspect. In the pandemic, uh, I, I believe that we have three waves of uh, pandemic that we're going through. The first one is the, the medical pandemic. So, yun yung naramdaman natin na una, no? the, the COVID, the virus, and all. And the second wave would be the economic. So, um, our economy in the Philippines and in other nations of the world is all, also affected. And the third wave would be our mental health. So, right now, maybe some of you are experiencing already the effects of the pandemic in your mental health. So maybe some of you are experiencing feelings of anxiety, depression, okay, and the like. So I hope this talk would be able to help you a bit ano, understand um, this uh, mental health. Ano nga ba yung mental health na tinatawag natin? And I hope that I will be able to help you um, learn coping strategies um, for us to survive and thrive during these trying times. All right, so... Today, it's all about you, um, our administrators, and um, our faculty members have worked so hard um, in order to pull off this kind of event. As a matter of fact, I have here technical assistance, a group of faculty and staff of INCAT who's helping me and assisting me in the Zoom, okay? So... This is all for you. Today is all about you. Okay, so before I start, formally start with my lecture, I would like to ask Muna, kumusta kayo? All right. How is it going? So para medyo mas uh, interactive ang ating audience. Okay. So if you're feeling okay na okay, kindly heart react. Okay. If you're feeling, ma'am, sakto lang. Sakto lang. Okay lang naman. You please react. Uh, please like react. Okay? If you're like this, hindi ko na ata kaya. Okay? Sad react naman dyan. And, ma'am, hindi ko na talaga kaya. Okay? Mag-angry react kayo. Okay? So, I flash the legend on the screen. So, I encourage everybody to be interactive. Participate. Okay, I'm seeing hearts. Okay na okay. Meron yung mga pakunti-kunting ano, like sign. Sakto lang. Okay. Okay. Wala bang ano dyan? Sad dyan or angry? Okay. Wala pa. Okay, later on baka merong mag, ano, mag, mag comment or mag-react ng different emoji. Okay, so... For the next few minutes, this is what we're going to expect. Ano? Uh, number one, uh, we're going to discuss about mental health. Ano nga ba ang mental health? What the, what's the technical definition of mental health? And the second part would be, ano yung mga attacks sa mental health na, natin? Ano yung mga hindi nakakabuti? Okay, and the last part would be, uh, what are the ways to cultivate or to, you know, um, cope um, so that we'll be able to foster okay, a healthy mentally you all right so excuse my voice i've been talking non-stop this week <laughs> all right so i hope that you will be everyone of us will be open and teachable in heart and spirit i will be dropping some bombs later on things or concepts that uh, maybe are foreign to you or um it's contrary to your beliefs or your lifestyle but i hope that we get to be so open and teachable here so that we can maximize our learning uh, opportunity or our uh, um our um the the time that is given to us all right are you ready pa comment naman dyan, mga ano mga students mga faculty and staff all right with your readiness level 1 to 10 are you ready Okay. Okay. So let's start with the first um, part of, um, of my talk. 
um, what is mental health? So mental health in perspective. Uh, mental health is not just the absence of mental illness or a psychological disorder. So if you say na, ay, wala naman akong diagnosis, I'm not depressed, I'm not clinical depressed, I don't have generalized anxiety disorder, I don't have PTSD, I don't have bipolar or any mood disorder, so I'm mentally healthy. So that's not the case, no? Uh, it doesn't mean that you don't have a clinical diagnosis, that you're a mentally healthy individual. Sometimes nga, I learned from my one of my profs uh, in the grad school that sometimes mas functional, may mas functional pa or functioning yung mga may mental health condition. All right? So mental health involves a state of well-being in which people are able to cope with normal stresses they face in daily life. Okay, so it's a state of well-being in which people are able to cope with normal stresses they face in daily life. So why is it important to take care of our mental health? Um, number one, it allows us to recognize our own abilities. Okay. Um, it allows us to see what our strengths are, ano yung mga capable tayong gawin. Okay. Kung hindi ka mentally healthy, hindi mo yun makikita. Right. So the second um, uh, point here is a men uh, our mental health or uh, us being mentally healthy individual allows us to work productively. So we are functional, okay? We can do our task required of us, whether it's module or uh, assignments or whether it's, it's tasks in the school, no? If you have a job or if you have, you're working. So mental health allows us to work productively and work smart. And last, it allows us to make meaningful contributions to the community. So a mentally healthy individual doesn't just... Uh, serve his uh, his self or herself but is also um, able to make contributions to the communities all right it's very important for us to to um, talk about or take care of our mental health because even if you're the richest most physically fit and most intelligent person in this uh, virtual you know uh, time or in this world if your mental health suffers everything will go downhill so i'm not saying these things are entirely bad no uh, being physically fit being rich okay but these things your possessions and possessions won't even matter if that time comes when your mental health suffers okay wala siyang kwenta kung ikaw natamaan ng mental health condition na hindi mo alam kung paano magko-cope all right I read he I, I read in Soul Keeping by John Orthberg. I've been reading it when I came home last 2019. Sabi niya dito. And it's very ano no? Um it's very very painful truth. Okay. We live in a world that teaches us to be more concerned with the condition of our cars or our careers or our portfolios than the condition of our souls. Maybe because a dent in a soul is more easily concealed than a dented car. Okay. So as we start, I want you to reflect on this. What am I aiming for or doing? Okay, that yes, I would or could gain okay, in the expense of my mental health or in the expense of my soul for that matter. Right? It's a difficult question, I guess. So let's take a closer look into the characteristics of being a mentally healthy individual. So people who are mentally healthy are able to exhibit the following. Number one, they have the ability to feel, express, and manage a range of positive and negative emotions. Okay? Um, a mentally healthy individual have the ability to feel, express, and manage a range of positive and negative emotions. Uh, take note, no? Positive and negative emotions yung nakalagay dito. So, being mentally healthy doesn't mean you're always joyful, you're always energetic, you're always positive. So, I see ano naman si, like kunyari, sino yung mga nandito sa Facebook? Si Janelle, mm, masayahin naman siya eh. So, Mentally healthy siya. May shout out, no? Si Raven Sales, ano naman siya eh, uh, energetic siya palagi. So, mentally healthy siya. Okay, hindi palaging ganun, no? 
being mentally healthy sometimes would mean being able to joyful when you're joyful, being able to feel sadness when you're feeling sad. Okay? So if you're feeling also grief or anger, okay, being mentally healthy means being able to express and feel and manage these emotions even if it's negative. Okay, is that clear? Okay. I don't know if you have watched already Inside Out uh, movie. Okay. Matagal na to. Pero I hope you were able to watch it. Watch it. It's a very good movie. And um, I have a favorite scene here. I don't know if I could play it. Pero try natin. Okay. Pa-comment naman ako if you... If you are able to hear the audio. Just playing. No, it's not playing. Okay, so I will just narrate it, no? Kung sino man yung nakapanood ng Inside Out. So there's a scene in the movie wherein um, Bing Bong, one of the characters, Uh, is sad kasi nakakalimutan na siya ni Riley yung yung main character natin so nasa sad siya kasi hindi na siya part ng memory niya so nawawala na siya sa memory niya so how would that make you feel no if a person close to you or important to you nawawala ka na sa head space niya sa life space niya and heart space niya okay? that's very painful no so uh, in, a, in that scene or in that movie Bing Bong sat down and then He started crying. And then si Joy, being that very joyful, vibrant, energetic person that she is, okay, went to Bing Bong and then, it's okay, okay lang yan, tara na, we have to go and we have to move forward. Kanya. And to no avail, hindi talaga niya mapagalaw si Bing Bong. So they were not able to move forward. So Joy started to become very frustrated. Even if, bakit hindi nag-work? Even if I am encouraging him, cheering him up. And then comes sadness. Yeah, she's that cute, very cute um, face, na blue face, na character ng Inside Out. And then he just, she just sat um, down with Bing Bong at that time. And then he, she started to validate to what Bing Bong was feeling. So, you know, that, that must be very hard. That must be very painful. Because, you know, you've, you've invested or um, you made memories together. And now, hindi ka na part ng memory niya. So at the time, Bing Bong started to, you know, feel more sad. <laughs> okay. But after that, after na nailabas niya lahat ng, um, you know, um, yung pains niya and yung iyak niya, dun na siya yung, she, he was able to um, stand up and move forward. Okay, so if you have come across already the movie, this should like point a very significant uh, thing with how we manage our emotions. Okay, negative emotions aren't entirely negative and bad for you. It is a signal that something is wrong. And when we have a signal that there's something wrong, we know how to handle or respond to it. So, our human tendency kasi is to avoid pain and negativity at all costs. Ayaw natin ng pain eh. Ayaw natin ng masaktan. Ayaw natin yung mga negativity. Come to think of it, how easy are we to dismiss a classmate or a colleague when she or he is saying about, uh, he is uh, sharing about a heartbreaking story or his or her grief? How easy it for us to say an advice or encouragement to band aid his or her pain without giving him a chance to process it. Okay. All right. Gano kabilis tayo mag Ay, di, friend okay lang 'yan. Kaya natin 'to. Agad-agad without giving that person a space to, you know, feel that pain first. Why? Because we're uncomfortable with pain and we're uncomfortable with negative emotions. So, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to feel negative emotion. So grief, according to the books I've read, no, grief is a pain that heals. You have to gr- go through it. It's a healing kind of pain. Okay, so when I do my counseling, 
Okay, uh, allow me to share uh, my insights from my uh, counseling profession. No, I have uh, clients and then they would say, uh, na ma'am, kala ko pag pupunta ko ng counseling, after that, I will feel better. Boy, <laughs> hindi ako clown. <laughs> I would joke them na hindi ako clown, no? but I'm a counselor. But I would, al- I, I would always say to them na, you know, that's the healing kind of pain. You're starting to see kasi the, 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 your, your negative emotions and you're starting to see um, your situation and you're starting to be aware of all these things. That is why it's painful at first. But it's the kind of pain that would, heal, that would lead to healing. If we don't learn how to embrace negative emotion, the tendency for us people or humans is to flee okay, or to be paralyzed. So this this may lead to emotional paralysis, no? So pwede tayong umiwas or pwede tayong ma-paralyze. Ayoko nang gumalaw, ma'am. Ayoko nang mag-move forward. I don't even want to make a decision. So ganun siya. Um, uh, I was reading The Forward of Grief Observed by C.S. Lewis. It's a very short and good book. And it caught, this line caught my attention. Sabi niya dun sa forward niya, it took me almost 30 years to learn how to cry without feeling ashamed. Okay? It took me almost 30 years to learn how to cry without feeling ashamed. Okay? Okay. So, are you ashamed with your negative emotion? Uh, the next time you feel that no negative emotion, a burning sensation, a tug in your heart, in your chest, and your feelings are but badly hurt, sit with it, cry, af- and after you let it out, ask yourself, you know, what, what triggered me? What is this telling me? And how would I respond? That, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, would lead us to a better coping mechanism. Alright, hindi mo lang siya binan-aid. Kasi eventually, pag binaban-aid mo lang siya, sasabog ka. Alright. Okay, gets ba natin? First, ano pa lang yan? <laughs> First, uh, quality pa lang. Sabi ni Lay na apay, ay, sabi ni Algen, sabi na cute ka, ma. <laughs> Alright, yung mga kung ano-anong kinocomment dyan na I will mention. All right. Okay, so let's uh proceed to the next qual- uh, quality. Comment kayo if I'm too fast. Okay, madaldal talaga ako so I'll be sharing a lot. The next would be the ability to cope with and manage change and uncertainty. Okay, as Filipinos, we are known to be experts in adjusting, adapting to changes, no? We are known worldwide for that. So, they say we are resilient to changes and uncertainties. It's one of the qualities and strengths that we have. Okay? But last year, we can't deny the fact that everyone were not spared from 2020's major plot twist. Okay? The pandemic. Okay? Comment niyo naman dyan. San kayo when they announced that, oh, guys, we're on lockdown? Where were you at the time? Ako, I was in my office in Batak and they told us na we're on lockdown niya. Hindi pa nag-sync in sa akin so I was ano, working overtime and I came out of the office and then lo and behold, there's no cars, there's no people. So it was really ano, um, a heart-sinking, a surreal scene or view. Okay? Right? happening right before my eyes. So sabi ko, nag-aantay na lang ako ng zombies na lalabas. <laughs> okay, so that's how major the plot is that the plot twist was. Okay, in psychology, we have what we call threat rigidity rigidity response. Okay, so it says that when we are threatened, we often respond with something called threat rigidity. So which means that we stop being flexible and move to a command and control response. So during the pandemic, uh, uh, naging tendency ng maraming tao maging command and control response. So 
they just they just focus everything on countering the threat in order so, to survive. Okay? So, right now, we're all trying our best to get through this season or this pandemic alive, no? All right. As a matter of fact, Adam Grant has recently labeled one of the dominant emotions this year, which is what he called languishing. Okay? Languishing is a name for the blah you're feeling. Blah. I don't feel like, you know, uh, studying or something. So that's what he called that emotion. No? This is the void between depression and flourishing. And it's the absence of well-being. It can dull your motivation and focus. Okay. But before I make my talk so depressing, <laughs> sounds so des depressing, I also found some interesting uh, studies. So studies have shown that the generation during times of great uncertainty, such as the Great Depression, Recession, and the like have relatively increased social and civic responsibilities. Okay, the generations who have gone through the toughest times are recorded to be one of the most other-centered, socially aware, and relevant, selfless, and compassionate. Okay, so yun daw yung, ano, yung, yung lumabas sa mga studies nila. So those uh, who live through the great uncertainties uh, became more socially aware and responsible. Okay, so I have a hope in this generation, no? Now, all those who are living in this most difficult times, I, I see that we're more socially aware and socially responsible. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so guard yourself from threat rigidity responses instead of seeing this pandemic a threat. See, uh, try to see this pandemic, uh, pandemic as an opportunity, okay? And allow the changes to mold you into a better person, a better student, a colleague, and a friend. And just a matter of time, I hope that our languishing will turn into uh, flourishing, yun yung opposite niya. So question, what have you learned in this pandemic so far? What have you learned? Okay, those who are in Facebook, you can comment your learnings so that we can, we can you know, learn from them as well. Okay, yung unang magko-comment, magsisend ako ng something. Okay. We'll send a load or GCash. All right, what have you learned in this pan pandemic so far? Are there any or wala pa? Later on at the end of my slides or at the end of my talk, I will share no, um two or three main or major things that I have shared. Okay. Okay. Sabi ni Carla Gia, be productive. Okay. I have learned, sabi naman ni Winisel, uh, Sir Winisel, I have learned that life is too short. Waking up every day is a blessing. Okay. That's a very good insight. Thank you. Okay. Meron pa ba? Hahabot? To move forward. Okay, so let's take note of these people, sir. No, we'll send uh, incentive to them. <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Ito, um, ito, no, if you may notice, I will insert a lot of lines, my favorite quotes in my favorite books. So this is one of my favorite uh, books and movies, The Lord of the Rings. Uh, sabi niya dito, I wish it did not happen in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf, and so all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. All right. I hope that resounds to you. Next, 
a mentally healthy individual has the ability to form and maintain good relationships with others. So they're able to form and maintain healthy, healthy, yeah? healthy relationships with others. So question, how is your relationships? Right now that we are isolated from one another, we can't see one another, we have limited opportunity and freedom. It's not like before that we can go out, go to our friends' houses, okay? I see each other at school, okay? That's very sad, no? But my question is, how is your relationship so far? How's your relationship so far? Are you able to uh, connect pa din with your friends? Are you able pa din to talk to them? Because one of the characteristics of a mentally healthy individual is being able to form, build relationships, and maintain them. Okay. Ayan. The next quality would be the ability to learn. Okay. Etong sinasabi natin na ability to learn, it's not just academically, ha? Na parang, ay, magaling ako sa math, ma'am. Magaling ako sa science. I'm not saying, or I'm, it's not limited to academic uh, learning. But the ability to learn means being able to learn from your mistakes, your miscalculations, learn from your failures. Ganyan. So, a mentally healthy individual is able to learn and bounce back no? from mishaps, mistakes, and so on and so forth. So you have a chance. You still have a chance to, ano, itama yung mga mistakes mo and able to learn from even yung mga hindi magagandang sitwasyon sa buhay mo. Okay. Sabi dito, no, trying to connect still. And some of the people are starting to share their learnings during the pan pandemic. Later on, I will go back to them and read them, okay? All right. Okay. So the last would be a sense of meaning and purpose in both your activities and their relationships. So do you know your purpose? Do you still have that sense of meaning and purpose in your life? Sabi nga ng Nescafe, no? It's like the, the, the most popular tagline of Nescafe. Para kanino ka bumabangon? Do you still know that? Para saan ka bumabangon? Do you still know that sense of meaning and purpose? And are you still connected with that sense of meaning and purpose in your life? It's very important for us to know our purpose because he who has a why to live for can bear almost anyhow. Again, he who has a why to live for can bear almost anyhow. Even if it's hard, if you know your why, you can bear with almost any how. So with all the things that I've said, no, dami mong sinabi, ma'am, let's have a wellness check today. Dear self, am I mentally well today? Sa lahat ng sinabi kong characteristics, do you fall under that category? Are you well? Okay. Baka magbago yung ano, no, emoji natin. Okay, let's go back to the ano. Um, Mag-react kayo or... Mag-react kayo ng heart if you're mentally well. Mag-react kayo ng sad if mamakmukhang parang hindi. Okay. Reaction, guys. <laughs> Am I mentally well? Am I still okay? Okay. I'm seeing heart reacts here. Okay. Puro heart reacts. I'm very happy for those people who have you know, um, reacted na okay pa sila. Okay, yung iba, like sign, okay pa. Okay, interestingly, wala pa ako nakitang hindi pa okay, no? Alright, so are we ready to move? Oh, meron ng isa-isa na ma'am, hindi na po kami okay. Okay. You know, that's valid, no? It's, it's a va valid emotion. And you're not alone experiencing that. Okay, we have few. Okay. All right. So let's move forward to the next uh, part of my talk, which is uh, I will be discussing here the warning signs, the attacks to our mental well-being. 
Number one is excessive fear, worry, or anxiety. Do you have excessive fear, worry, or anxiety? Okay. Uh, we have just come out of, like, I think a month long of ECQ. And it's really one of the, um, I think, most difficult uh, scene to see for me personally. Because that's the period where um, it's like almost every day now that I hear a sad news of a person passing. Ganyan. So, meron yung time na I was like telling the people inside our house. <laughs> Let's stop talking about the dead people first. <laughs> okay, because it's so, ano, it's, it's so... Um, you know, saddening and it it gets um, my anxiety levels high. And one of the warning signs na parang hindi na talaga ako okay is that you're experiencing excessive fear. So, hindi na lang siya normal. So, ano yung itsurahan niya no, yung excessive na fear? Yung the small things get into you. You can sleep already. You're, you're thinking about um the future, the things that are not still happening. And for some other people, they feel it in their physical bodies already. Okay, hi. Nag, nag, nag-shoot up yung blood pressure nila. For other people, nagko-cold sweats, hot flashes. For other people, they're shaking. Ganyan. So, these are like the warning signs that uh, maybe I'm not okay mentally. Sometimes we don't realize it, but you try to evaluate your thoughts. Ano yung nagko-consume ng thoughts mo? So for, for my clients, what we do is I ask them to uh, write their emotions or their thoughts. And I present an emotional wheel and then we try to explore together kung ano yung nararamdaman nila. And then dun lang lalabas na parang their thoughts are filled with fear, worry, and anxiety. And ang pinaka ano ngayon, um, pinaka apparent talaga na fear right now is the fear of uncertainty. We don't know what is going to happen in the next month, in the next year, and in the next months. Another um, warning sign is that feelings of loneliness and despair. You're feeling so alone. And I feel, I think it's very valid because we're isolated nga from one another. We can't get together that often. Okay, hindi yung parang dati na we go out. We can go out and eat together and laugh and, you know, support each other, like, physically. Yeah. So this is one of the warning signs. You're feeling lonely. I feel alone. No one understands me. No one gets me. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving of love. And sometimes it's very, ano no, it's very saddening because those who have like mental health condition or not mentally okay, they feel lonely even when they're with the people who they love, okay, or the people who love them, okay. They feel they they are feeling alone even if but may 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 kasama sila, okay. So that's the second. The third is you have now the desire to socially withdraw. Okay, socially withdraw from the people, your closest friends, your family members, your colleagues. Don't like people. Um, don't get me wrong. There are people who are introverts. Okay, I'm one of them. I'm a highly introverted individual. I get so agitated or I get so tired spending time with a lot of people. <laughs> Okay, but there's a thin line between being introverted and socially withdrawn. Yung socially withdrawn kasi hindi ka na kumakausap, you're not replying to to um, text messages, and you're not replying to, um, you know, how are you, kumusta ka, ganyan. So please, no, if you have friends, colleagues, okay, or mga anak ninyo, or you have, uh, what you call this, students who are not responding to you, please check on them. Kumustahin niyo sila. Okay, because baka meron na silang pinagdadaanan. How are you? You haven't been, you know, active in the social media lately. Or you haven't been replying to my, my messages. Are you okay? And I think that comes a long way, no? That, that goes a long way. Okay. Okay. Yes, that's right. Um... 
Moments of loneliness, isolation can make you question your worth. Okay. All right. Next is negative thinking or destructive uh, thoughts. Um, you're starting to feel already catastrophic thoughts. So you're not just imagining no, your tomorrow, ako, ano mangyayari bukas or the next week. But how you imagine the future is uh, always on the worst case scenario. Yung pinaka worst palagi yung naiisip mo. Okay, and I'm not saying this in a level na I want to shame you or I want to, you know, degrade you for feeling that. For some people kasi, uh, especially those who are um, having mental health condition, even if they choose not to think about these things, it's almost automatic for them to think the worst case, case scenario. So guys, let's be careful ah, when like, when when a person when, when you observe uh someone na parang patang palaging mega ka ganyan for some people they can't help it okay all right so they are filled with negative thoughts about themselves yun nga no parang walang nagmamahal sa akin mga ganun so for some people hindi lang sa drama but it's actually happening and it's a um, it's a combination of a lot of factors. It's not just the situation, the environment, but there's a physiological factor to it. That is the reason why there are people who might need medication and professional help. Okay, with all that being said, again, I ask you, are you mentally well today? Let's do a wellness check. Are you mentally well? Are you the type of person that, ex that is experiencing excessive fear and anxiety right now? Who wants to socially withdraw? Who wants to disappear? Who feels lonely? Okay. One of my profs said this when I was a college student. Mental health is a personal responsibility and is worth the effort and care. Okay, mental health is a personal responsibility and is worth the effort and care. Remember the quotation or a line in the book that I have flashed earlier that in, in our society, we care more about our dented cars, our portfolios than our souls. But right now, I'm saying that your soul and your mental health is worth the effort and care. Again, there's no health without mental health. You invest in your mental health. Okay, me as a professional, as a counselor, and I used to, uh, I, I also teach by the side. Um, even if it's really expensive to get, you know, counseling therapies or like counseling session, I do so because it's a preventive measure for me. It's an investment investment for me. So even if I'm okay and all, I talk to a professional because I cater to a lot of people. You know, I problems are my breakfast. Okay. I eat breakfast with problems. Okay. Morning pa lang, wala ng problema yun ang babasa ko and lunch and dinner. All right. So I have to invest in mental health. So I have to talk to a professional. I have to the point of um, I have to establish a routine before I get to sleep. For, for some of my friends, they invest in essential oils, pillows, okay? That would, you know, help them sleep better. So these are just examples, ano? Because it's worth the effort and care. Um, ma, mahal naman yan and everything. But come to think of it, no? If your mental, mental health suffer and then it, everything goes downhill and then you get sick and all, it's more expensive. All right, so, so since I said that it's worth the effort and care, how do we cultivate now our mental well-being? So I will just um, cite some examples. Ano? All right, kumusta kayo mga Facebook friends who are watching with us? Are you still good? Am I too fast? 
Okay, react naman kayo dyan if you're still, uh, um, you can still catch up with me. All right, the number one um, way to cultivate mental health is to get adequate sleep. Okay. This is something that I also struggle with. Okay, I'm not saying it in a way na okay, I I get it all together. Um I I struggle with getting adequate sleep because sometimes I get to work overtime pa ganyan, because I teach um uh college students. <laughs> all right, so I need to prep. So um but I have to emphasize the importance of sleep right here. Because uh, when you get adequate sleep, sleep, it would lead you to a better cognitive function or even your, you know, your reactions emotionally. It would lead to a better response to, to situations. So have you experienced having no sleep and then yung konting ingay lang or konting ano ng kulig mo or a student, sobrang nairita ka na. Ganyan. When I, 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 when I was younger, I used to okay, um, disregard adequate sleep. So, kaya naman eh. Kaya namang magpuyat ganyan. But, but when I became a counselor, at nagpuyat ako, kinabukasan, magka-counseling ako ng client. My focus, it, it's all around the place. I'm so messed up. So, when I became a counselor, I think back in 2015 or 2016, I had to adjust my sleeping time. I had to sleep as early as 10 p.m. Kasi ang work ko noon 7.30. So para makapag-focus ako dun sa client ko, I have to complete that. Otherwise, pag nag-uusap na kami ng client ko, iba-iba na yung naiisip ko. Yung kakainin ko kinabukasan, yung kakainin ko mamaya, mga ganyan. So you have to get adequate sleep. Um... I'm not only saying uh, sleep here, but I'm also saying uh, I, I'm also talking about rest in general. So, when managing your tasks, okay, fellow educators, okay, I, I know we have educators here, our teachers, okay, and even our students, no, but I, I will also emphasize this, this to those who are working. Fellow educators, when you're managing your tasks, try to plot a time for rest. I know we're all busy, no? Inside our house, we're all teachers here. <laughs> so, pwede na kami magpatayo ng, ano, ng skwelahan dito. And sometimes, I get to, you know, 1 a.m. may nagpiprint pa rin ng module, mga ganyan. Sabay-sabay kami nagkaklase minsan. But when managing your task, you have to be deliberate in um, vacating a, a day wherein this day, I will focus on resting on leisure. Okay. Okay. Gets ba natin? Why? Because uh, research would say that in order for us to be uh, mentally healthy individuals or it could um, help our brains, if you set aside one day a week, we're in you get to do things in a low, in a slower pace. Okay, kakain ka ng medyo mas mabagal, okay? Lalabas ka or magpre-prep ka, okay, yun ang mas mabagal, you take your shower slowly, hindi yung palaging nagmamadali ka. So you you set aside a day like that. A day wherein you can read your books, watch movies, okay? Things that would you know spark joy in your heart and would bring the light in your spirit and in your soul. Okay? Because if we if we ignore or we overlook our need for rest, that's our design, ha? Ang design natin, kailangan talaga natin ng regular uh, days of rest. If we overlook that, it will pile up and then we'll get sick, okay? We'll get chronic pains, will experience mental health condition. And if you don't try to keep it right now, the daily, okay, or the once a week, okay, your crisis later on or your chronic pain or your mental health condition will keep them for you. 
So, mapo-force-stressed ka eventually. Okay? I've known a lot of people who were like, you know, burnt out and was put to forced rest because they forgot to rest. Okay? Rest is very important in taking care of your mental health. Your need, you need regular ep- episodes of rest to recharge your mind, reevaluate your values, and recalibrate. Okay? So, kailangan yun. Rest is being productive. Kasi palaging sinasabi, ma'am, wala na kaming time sumagot ng mga module natin or wala na kaming time for work. So, that's, hindi kami magiging productive. But no, rest is productive. Invest in good sleep. Okay? You put boundaries. So, pag 5 p.m. na, okay, <laughs> sorry po, may merong, merong maano dito, pero pag 5 p.m. na, you try to mute those group chats, okay? You try to, to maybe uninstall your messenger, okay? It's time for me to spend time with my family and to rest. While, There are times that I understand that you have to overtime, okay, out of like, you know, the service. But um, I highly encourage you to pagpabukas kung kaya. Kung emergency ka, pwede naman yung isa-isa lang. Pero don't um, do it on a regular basis. Because it's just a matter of time. You will burn out kung ganun yung lifestyle natin. So... What I do before is that pag 5 p.m. na I will uninstall my messenger and I use another app. I use Telegram. And then that's the um, the platform that I use to communicate with my friends. So that work <laughs> couldn't get into me. Okay, I have to protect that. I have to protect my rest because um, my best tool in my work is myself. So I cannot help other people. If I'm not okay. Gets natin yung concept? All right. Back to basis and b- basics. Engage in regular physical exercise. Uh, if I know, no, yung iba may mga routines na. Yung iba, hirap pa din. But let's, ano, let's, let's. Do it together, guys. <laughs> Regular physical exercise because exercise will actually release happy hormones. Okay? It's something that I need to work on as well. Third, you have to learn effective coping skills to manage stress. So right now, what is your source of stress? You have to identify that. Is it work? Is it studies? Or is it like, you know, your kapitbahay who's always ano, nagpapatugtog ng malakas pag nagkaklase ka? It's the, is it the pandemic? Is it social media? So identifying the source of stress can help us, you know, identify the right coping strategy to manage the stress. Okay? And we have, ano, we have different coping mechanisms. So like, kunyari, no? Um, I will choose randomly here. Si Alexis, ang coping niya is maging plantita. Pero ako, I'm not into plants. So it might not relieve my stress. So ako, I'm into nature, I'm into like seeing, you know, the beach and driving and everything. So that, it doesn't mean that it works for me, it will work for you. So you have to get to know yourself very well in order for you to learn effective coping skills. What are your coping skills? Maybe you can share no, our audience in Facebook. Maybe you can share your effective coping skills. For other people, yun nga, plants, they cook, they go for a walk. They take a shower, okay? They sing. What else? They talk to their therapists or their counselors. They, they spend time with their family and friends. Okay, how about you? Do you have a strategy or an activity to relieve your stress? I'm almost done here. Okay, and the last one is develop a growth mindset. When faced with difficulties, develop a growth mindset. So um, always, ano, um, if you're faced with uncertainty or uh, difficulty, you ask yourself, what can I learn from the situation? What is this situation teaching me? Okay, 
This is the difference between fixed mindset and growth mindset. So if uh, um, fixed mindset avoids challenges, ayoko, ayoko na mahirap. Doon tayo sa madali lamang. Growth mindset is they embrace challenges. Okay, game. Sige. Let's try to ano, strive or to thrive or hurdle that challenge. A fixed mindset, believe intelligence and abilities are fixed. I cannot improve anymore. I can't better myself. Okay. While growth mindset believes that intelligence and abilities can be improved. Okay. Fixed mindset, effort means you're not already good enough. Effort helps, um, while growth mindset is help, effort helps you master new skills. Okay, having a fixed mindset would think failure means you're a failure. But if you have a growth mindset, failures are an opportunity to learn and grow. Okay, fixed mindset blames others for setbacks. Okay, so if there's problems, ganyan. Ikaw kasi, yung teacher ko kasi. Yung kaibigan ko kasi. Hindi nag-send ng notes, hindi ako pinakopyan. Kasalanan niya. While a growth mindset reflects on setbacks and use them as a lesson. There's a certain sense of accountability na parang, ah, okay, this is where I got it all wrong. And now I can learn from it. The next time that I encounter this situation or problem, I can do things differently. Okay, that's growth mindset. Um, fixed mindset becomes, we become defensive defensive when critic. So, do you know people like that? When, they, when, you're, when they're critic, they become defensive. Okay, magagalit sila sa'yo. Okay? They will hate you. Or I know someone, no, na parang pag mag-suggest siya, feel, pag mag-suggest ka, feeling niya, inaatake mo siya. Okay. So that's uh, an example of fixed mindset. A growth mindset, on the other hand, okay, you receive feedbacks from others well. Ah, ganun ba? Ah, sige, next time I will take note of it. Uy, ano ka na naman ah? Uh, late ka na naman nag-submit, friend. Okay. Oo nga eh, kasi tinamad talaga ako eh. Nag-Facebook lang ako buong gabi eh. So that's a growth mindset. They understand na, you know, there's a responsibility and they don't use or they don't see corrections from others as an attack, but um, a symbol or, you know, a way of, you know, to say that I love you. Okay. It's, um, It's grace and mercy towards you that people give you feedback and correction. Kasi it means mahal ka nila. Kung hindi, eh di pinabayaan ka na nila. Pahala ka sa buhay mo. But the reason why they are commenting or trying to correct you is that they want you to be a better person and that they know that um, you have a potential to be better. Okay? So our dear students, we believe in you. We know that you have potential. So if if you hear comments and corrections and suggestions, okay, it, that's the re, uh, the reason why is that we believe in your destiny and your future. Okay, and last, person who has a fixed mindset feels threatened by other people's successes. Okay, wow, na promote si ganito, threatened ako. Okay, uso uso to no dito sa ano. Dito sa Pilipinas. When another person is succeeding, medyo triggered ka. But if you have a growth mindset, celebrate other people's successes. Your time will come, kapatid. Okay? Season, season lang yan. I believe your time will come. You'll get, you know, the success and victory and promotion that you are, you know, aiming for. And having the truth in mind, no, that your time will come and your season will come, you get to have that freedom to celebrate other people. Okay, life is too short. I have read it in the comment section a while ago. And Okay, and life is too short to, to believe 
um, or life is too short na gagamitin pa natin yung oras natin to envy or to, you know, kaingitan yung iba. Alright. I'm down to... Kanina ko pa sinasabi na malapit na ako, pero ang dami pa pala. Okay, so try to keep a positive outlook in in life. Um, I'm not saying that we uh, engage in toxic positivity, no? Meron yung ano ngayon, um, the concept of toxic positivity. Yung parang, if you have concerns, magdasal ka lang. Naku, kaya mo yan. Mas malala nga yung pinagdadaanan ko, eh. Ano pa ba yung ikakadepress mo? Mayaman naman kayo. Okay, you have your ano. May boyfriend ka, may girlfriend ka, may family ka, ganyan. So these are like some examples or statements um, of toxic positivity. I'm not saying mali ang magdasal at mali ang, you know, you have the resources ano um, in front of you. But again, as we have uh, discussed uh, earlier, It's okay, you make space for them to process their emotions or make space for them to feel the negative feeling and not ban aid right away. Okay? Notes on realistic optimism. So I'm for realistic optimism. So, ang realistic optimism is your positivity and optimism in life is based on reality, based on your past uh, successes and victories. So if you are having a hard time right now, like kunyari, for our dear students, no, ma, medyo hirap na talaga ako, mukhang hindi na ako makakagraduate. You go back to your past battles. You go back to your past hurdles and remember how you overcome them one by one. Okay, nakaabot ka sa point na to. One year and counting, the pandemic, you're still here. So you must have or you must possess a strength and courage okay to be able to reach this far so you go back to those times that's realistic optimism is it positive yes is it based on reality yes hindi sa toxic okay go back to the time na nagbreak kayo ng boyfriend mo or girlfriend mo tas may exam ka pero pumasa ka pa din kahit pa paano go back to the time that you felt like you can you can't endure another day and yet here you are still alive. Okay. It just means that you've got a warrior in you. Bank on that, you can do this again. Ganon yung realistic optimism. All right. At on the other hand, we have informed pessimism. Ito yung negativity, but it's also founded by, um, founded in truth. So, it's okay to be negative also. <laughs> But based on reality, like for example, we know that in the coming months or in the com- coming uh, weeks, hindi tataas ang ekonomiya natin. Is it negative? Yes. But is it informed? Yes. Stay connected to other people and help others. Um, we are really not designed to be alone. We are social beings. Okay, so I know it's really hard to connect right now with other, but you know, um, make an effort, message someone, all right? Um, video call someone, all right? Um, I have a research in one of my research or one of my interests to, uh, to study is about suicide ideations. So I researched about that last 2017-2018 and I studied the effect of the influence of purpose in life on suicidal ideation. So there's uh, four types of purpose that I studied, the others focused, the family focused, the fam- uh, family others focused, God focused, type of purpose, and then the self-focused type of purpose. And what did I found out? Okay, so ang, na, ang, na, na, ang findings ng study, ang, ng, ng study is that if we have a purpose directed towards other people, it would increase your likelihood or it would increase your suicide risk. But if your purpose in life is just to serve yourself, it actually increases your suicide risk 
by 1.5%. Okay, I'm not saying don't take care of yourself or, or overlook yourself, but find ways to go beyond yourself and help other people. Okay? Um, right now, uh, I, I'm very busy nowadays no, because I'm, uh, I'm teaching um, a lot of subjects. I overload tayo ngayon. But I have a virtual study group. Okay, we're in every night we gather together, we ano, um video call. Okay, my friends are reviewing for the bar and for boards. So andun lang kami nagtitigan kami, nag-aaral kami together. So that kahit limited, we stay connected and we help other people um uh, pa din. All right, kumustahin mo yung mga kaibigan mo. Uh, hindi natin alam kung hanggang saan madadala yung taong yon, yung pagkakamusta mo. I have clients before that um, who opened up to me na, Ma'am, um, alam mo ba, last week I really plan to take my life, but nung dumaan ako sa ano sa lobby, may classmate ako, tapos tinapik lang ako, tapos, uy, kumusta ka na, ganyan. So that's the time na gusto niya magpakamatay. Pero like that small or the that small gesture, stop him from doing. So, may nangamusto lang sa kanya. Okay? So, I hope that would encourage you to, you know, be extra gentle. This is not the time for us to, you know, hate on each other, be impatient with one another, be extra gentle. Okay? Be extra patient, encourage other people. Okay? Don't degrade people. Okay? That's the ways that we can help. Okay. Seek help. Um, yes, this is something that I want to point out as well. Uh, if you're not okay na, basing on the wellness check that we uh, did a while ago, you have to seek help. So you can seek help from your family, a trusted adult, especially if you're students right here, and also colleagues, no? Um, it's okay to seek professional help. Diba? If we're feeling sick, especially nowadays, Okay, it's normal for us to consult a doctor. If you're not feeling well or mentally well, it should also be normal for us to seek a professional. So there are registered counselors, psychotherapists, psychologists, and uh, psychiatrists that are trained very well in processing your thoughts and emotions. They studied very hard and they have trainings. So you can go to, to, to them and seek help. And so that you will have a better grasp or understanding or perspective of what you're going through. Um, may stigma pa sa atin kasi when we go to, um, to a professional or a mental health professional, ang akala nila baliw ka agad, okay? Or for other people, ay na demon possess yan or may, it's a certain uh, kind of weakness or vulner vulnerability. And it would lead us to self-denial or self-diagnosis, which is more even dangerous. So our students, since they don't know where to seek help, they go to Google and, you know, type their symptoms there and then they self-diagnose. That's even more dangerous. So if you're not feeling okay, you seek a professional, it's normal. Even me, I seek a therapist and I seek a counselor time after time. Okay, and the last but not the least, okay, cultivate your spirituality, okay? Trust in the Lord if you can, um, you know, you've done everything already, okay? Surrender and hope that things would get better, okay? Spend with people who might, you know, um, encourage you or help you build your relationship with God. and you know, grow spiritually together. Sabi dito, ni Abraham Lincoln, I have been driven many times upon my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for that day. Okay. From a counselor's heart to yours, final words before I end, no? Um... Things I've learned about the pandemic, number one, you have to choose your battles very well. You have to choose your battles and your fights. We are in a marathon, not a sprint. 
Okay, kailangan mong irregular, irregulate yung energy mo and yung emotion mo. So, medyo mahaba-haba pa yung tatahakan natin. So, you have to choose your battle. So, you let go of the things na, okay, na parang it's not worth it to like, spend my time on. I have learned during the pandemic uh, to let go of criticisms or uh, things that would not help me and things that are not even true. So, stress pa ako, di ba? So, Gora lang. Okay lang yon. So you have to choose your battles. You don't have to engage in all of the battles that life throw at you. Okay? Only choose the one, the ones that matter. Huwag patulan lahat. Okay? You list your energy saps. Those who would uh, suck your energy. Lately, social media has been sucking my energy so I deactivated for a while but I was I learned a while ago that we're on Facebook and we're not on Zoom so I had to go back to <laughs> my Facebook but afterwards maybe I will disappear once again into social media so because that's my energy sap so it's it might different from you for you okay and something that I learned is self care is your priority because I have become clear about at least one thing self care is never selfish act It is simply good stewardship of the only gift I have, the gift I was put on earth to offer to others. Anytime we can listen to true self-care and give it the care it requires, we do so not only for ourselves, but for the many others whose lives we touch. Okay. Okay. Anytime we can listen to true self-care, and give it the care it requires, we do so not only for ourselves, but for many others whose lives we touch. Okay? Nag-overtime po ata ako. Alright, leaving you with this, Isaiah 40, 30 to 31, even young people get tired, then stumble and fall, but those who trust the Lord will find, the, find new strength. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, he who has begun a good work in you will completed. Okay, thank you so much. That would end my discussion for today. And um, I hope we'll be able to answer your questions later on. Thank you for listening. From the bottom of my heart and the rest of my participants today in the live forum, I'd like to say thank you to our keynote speaker in today's webinar. For your questions and other concerns, let us welcome Mr. Joy Atkinson, Mr. Dean, the moderator for our open forum. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Rodel, for uh, introducing me for a short while. And uh, before we uh, we put ourselves to the open forum, let me uh, just take this opportunity to thank our guest speaker, Ma'am Shandi, for sharing your expertise, your thoughts. And of course, uh, this, I believe, had helped our, our students, our parents, and of course, not only the parents, but of course, the teachers themselves. Kasi alam ko marami din silang pinagdaanan, especially in preparation of bojos and some other things that we have done uh, during the pandemic time. So at this juncture, my dear students and parents, or even teachers, uh, pwede na po tayong mag-ask ng ating mga questions, mga concerns natin, mga issues na gusto nating idulog sa ating expert na counselor na si Ma'am Candy para sa ganon kung meron kayong mga katanungan o gustong mabigyan ng clarification pwede natin i-bring out at this moment. Okay, uh, meron akong nakitang question kanina ni Sir I think uh, one of our faculty members is Sir um, Marlon Kubangbang 
of course, nakita na ni Ma'am yung mga ano natin, reactions natin, reactions ng mga students, mga parents, mga kasama natin. Pero nakikita ko naguunahan si Ma'am Winisel at saka si Ma'am Sir Marlon. So ito po yung ano, yung message and at the same time question ni Sir Marlon ko bang bangko. With the change of setup in education now, our value changes to something different from our normal routine, like sleeping very late and wake up very late also. Change and eating patterns, among others, is this related to mental health issues to some extent? That is the question, ma'am. So if I got it right, no, um, uh, sir was asking about the changes in sleeping patterns. Am I yes, right? I think, yes. Yes. Um, yes, definitely. Um, Wait lang, medyo nag, may nage-echo lang, so I got a little bit distracted. Um, maybe you can uh, turn it, ano po, yan, the volume down lang. Okay, so uh, I discussed a while ago that um, we have to really, one of the ways for us to cultivate our mental health to get is to get adequate sleep. Um, sir, uh, yes, it would really affect um, your mental health, um, especially kung um, ganun na nga yung, uh, there are, you or you're not sleeping na. According to studies, yun nga, normal people um, need at least eight hours a day to sleep. With people who have mood disorders, they need 10 hours and more. Okay, yung mga mood disorders are like uh, depression, clinical depression, major depressive disorder, and bipolar. So they need more. Um, but at the same time, a mental health condition as well can lead to sleep disturbances. So you get the relationship. So the sleep, the, the lack of sleep, um, can cause mental health issues, but there are also mental health issues that lead to sleep disturbances. Hindi sila nakakatulog. And yun yung mga conditions such as anxiety, okay? generalized anxiety, and uh, yung may mga panic or yung may mga specific anxiety or may uh, mataas yung anxiety levels nila. So it's actually, it's related. But... Um, Minsan, yung isa yung nagkakos ng mental health condition. Minsan, yung mental health condition yung nagkakos ng sleep disturbance. But I have to clarify that it's not the only factor. Ano? It's, not, it's not just the lack of sleep that we're talking about here. If we're talking about mental health condition, it's a combination of a lot of factors. That could be a lack of sleep, um, lack of support, okay? stressful environment, um, machine gun deadlines, okay? <laughs> yung parang bukas may deadline ka, kinabukasan may deadline ka na naman, okay? So, these are just like um, some of the things that are coming up recently. So, I, I, I attended a training on managing the well-being of our employees and yun yung mga factors, no, that that came into the picture. Yung machine gun deadlines, ganyan. Yung transition natin from face-to-face -to, -face to, to virtual, ganyan. So, um, maybe, sir, you can explore on other factors that might contributed, that might have contributed to the um, mental stress, ganyan. So, I hope I answered it uh, clearly, sir. When, sir. Yes, ma'am, because... Uh... For us teachers, kasi madami kaming mga, mga talagang mental, mental disorders or mental stress during the past uh, preparations uh, during the pandemic time. So siguro uh, gusto namin talaga ma-relieve naman yung mga isipan namin. That's why some, uh, some not, only, not only teachers because parents all be served with regards to the education turnout now. So, madaming mga nagbago kasi. Kaya, really, they got uh, experience through this uh, mental uh, mental health. Marami silang naging experience. So, this time, ma'am, wala pa pong mga nakikita kong nababasa kong mga, mga questions. But I have here some, some messages gaya halimbawa ni Michelle Viernes, 
Um, in this pandemic, I learned that we have to make for two time management to be able to make things easy. Sa tingin ko ma'am, kahit na minamanage mo yung oras mo eh, talagang bothered ka talaga, lalo na yung mga bata. Da ang dami-daming ginagawa. And at the same time, yung mga uh, games application, isinasabay din nila. Maybe that is one way in uh, doing themselves relief. Di ba yes. ma'am? Diba, ma Oo. Yes. So yun yung ano nila para makakup sila doon sa mga problemang dinadala ng pandemic. Yes, we also have here a comment or um, a message from one of our colleagues also, Ma'am Winnie Salancheta. Moments of loneliness or isolation can make you question your worth. Ano pa yung ibig sabihin ni Ma'am Lito? Moments of loneliness or isolation can make you question your worth. Ano sa tingin ninyo, Ma'am? I, I think I, I, I read it uh, a while ago, sir. No? Um, and it's really a valid uh, feeling. Even uh, you're not lonely eh, or you're not isolated if you're in the presence of the wrong people. You can really have like, the tendency to question who you are. So um, it's, uh, it has really an effect. So what more right now that you are isolated from one another? So we start to question um, who we are, okay? Meron pa bang uh, future for me? Or meron pa ba akong importance? Mga ganyan. So this is the time that we're very vulnerable po kasi. Because yes. we are, again, we are social beings. We need people to survive, okay? Um, we need interactions. We need encouragement yeah. from other people. So what more right now that we are isolated from one another? This is the time that we're all vulnerable from like feelings, this, you know, and uh, uh, feeling unworthy feelings or feeling of you no know, lack of importance. Ganyan. So uh, again, even if it's hard to connect with um, someone else right now, uh, please uh, get in touch with uh, with your friends and your family. A simple kumusta or a simple or how are you doing? It would go a long way. Remember that the the circumstance or the situation that I shared a while ago with my client, na konting tapek lang at kumusta ng classmate niya sa lobby, hindi niya tinaloy mag ano mag suicide. So you don't know how important that is to other people. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, ma'am, uh, whatever things that may that you find may help, may help, may help. Uh, pwede mong gawin ito eh. Kung alam mo na yung mga kaibigan mo yung nakakatulong talaga sa iyo, you have to call them right away para at least ma-relieve ka doon sa mga problema na hinaharap mo. Now That's we right. have here a question ma'am from Ma'am Winisel na naman. Ma'am Winisel Anche. Hi ma'am. Okay, ma'am pala. <laughs> Sorry. There have been many cases of depression and even suicide in our country. I just wonder why our country does not have sufficient facilities to address mental health problems. We also lack professionals who are expert in addressing such problems. More programs and projects should also be established to correct the stigma that many have on mental health. These people immediately associate depression, anxiety, or bipolar disorder to insanity. I hope that this would be more facilities and services to people who do not have the means to avail this. What do you think, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. I, I also agree with ma'am. No? Uh, uh, when I, I did my research back in 2017, um, the statistics uh, that I, I was able to get at that time was daily we have seven Filipinos taking their own lives. So that would account to uh, one person taking their own lives in three and a half, every three and a half hours. So that statistics was only, uh, you know, years ago pa. Um, and we don't know there are unreported records as well because in the Philippines, there's this stigma and shame associated with uh, mental health condition, um, I agree that that we're uh, the, we're we're medyo lagging behind when it comes to mental health awareness in the Philippines. But I would also make I I would also want to make a point that we've come a long way already. I remember um, when I was still when I was okay. still studying in 
I, when I was still studying uh, during my college time, no, hindi ganito ka-open ang Pilipinas at hindi ganito ka-open ang Ilocos about mental health uh, conditions or in psychology. So when I go to Baguio and study uh, my degree, my chosen degree, I would go back and, oh, anong kinukuha mo? Tas I would say psychology. And then the people would, Oy, kayo yung ano ng mga baliw. So, there's uh, more stigma before. So, I would like to to make a point lang na, yes, we're still lagging. There's a lot of work to do, but we've come a long way. And um, right now, uh, malaking factor yung mental health, yung pandemic in our mental health. That is why I have um, included in my discussion that there's a third wave that we're experiencing. Um medical, economical, and the mental health wave. So, meron talagang rising cases of anxiety, uh, depression, and um, suicide cases. Okay? In other areas, ang pinaka ma- may mga may mga areas na mas mataas pa ang death by suicide kesa sa death by COVID. Okay? Yes, In other areas, ang tinatamaan mga young adults. Interesting, interestingly, but I'm not, hindi ko pa na-verify yung, yung statistics na to. But in Ilocos, I think even adults or yung mga older people um, are affected by suicidal ideations and attempts. Ganyan. So, um, I just wonder why our country does not have sufficient facilities to address mental health problems. I believe that, you know, we're... Um, un- a third world country and we're on survival mode. We start with the basics. Minsan yung basic nga medyo hirap pa tayo. Right? We don't have the, you know, the mental space or the head space to, you know, um, deal with these things because we're even barely surviving with our economy and our basic needs. But that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse for us to overlook a mental health condition. That's why I commend this programs that you are you know um organizing for us to better um understand mental health and give awareness to other people sabi ni ma'am Wenzel dito we also lack professionals who are experts in addressing such problems and um that's true also no it's a very difficult job so our dear students maybe you can consider taking up psychology in your your college ano again it's a difficult job and it's a narrow path to take it's a difficult decision for me actually to go into this this field it's sabi ko nga no we eat problems <laughs> during our breakfast and all but it's also a fulfilling one it's a noble job so maybe this time we can encourage our beer students maybe you can consider taking up psychology uh, later on and uh, more programs and projects should also be established to correct the stigma that many have on mental health this is right po ano na we need more awareness projects. So, ang first level po talaga is awareness. So, what we're doing here is awareness level pa lang. We're not yet on the accommodation level. Okay? Or modifying your system or even your programs to ac- accommodate the ones who are men- uh, suffering from mental health condition. So, ang ginagawa pa, rin, pa lang natin ngayon, talking about mental health issues or mental health aware- awareness pa lang. We're, we're just in the knowledge level pa or mind level but in terms of execution maybe we can go for uh, we can we can uh, apply whatever we have learned here and then um let's be educated more and then let's apply again so that mas ma, mas mabilis tayong mag move forward so we can um at least do uh pangalan nito incorporate programs right now in your guidance programs okay or even your um not just for the students but i would really encourage this is a call or plea for the administration to just like like insert programs that would um check on the or manage on the well-being of the teachers i believe so uh, sir jerry when you were talking a while ago na madami talaga kayong mahirap yung pinagdadaanan ng mga teachers no i i really feel that because in yun nga sabi mo kanina we're a family of educators four of us teachers in different developmental stages so we know the the difficulty i myself have experienced that so i Um, I hope that our, you know, administration would, um, you know, take a stand in managing the well-being of our um, um, pangalito faculty. They are the most valuable valuable resources right now. 
our people. So people comes first. Okay. So let's do ano, let's do yes. something that yes. uh, we can do something in our small sphere of in- influence. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much for that uh, very nice uh, uh, message or question yes, uh, answer from you. Now we have another question, ma'am, from Angela Roxan Crisostomo. I think this is a student of Intat. Ma'am, do you advise stress eating as a coping mechanism? Stress mechanism. Oh, st- Is oh, wow. eating eating yes. down para coping mechanism yes, natin. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, I like what you said a while ago, Sir Jerry, you know, that you're very open to whatever that helps. Mm-mm. Okay, whatever that helps. As long as it's healthy. So you're very open also na parang for other students kasi talaga, they use social media to relieve their stress. Okay, they, they, they watch TikTok videos and then they they do online games. Um, It's okay as long as you do it in moderation. The same is true with stress eating. If that makes you happy, if eating that masarap na pagkain makes you happy, <clears throat> Angela, go for it. But do it in moderation, okay? Um, ang mahirap kasi pag we always use one mechanism or coping mechanism to address an issue, okay, um, it we might not be able to process uh, the root causes of the stress. So it's okay to relieve. These are just relieving strategies. But, like, kunyari, ang stress mo pala, is um, about studies. And, okay, kumain ka, pero it, it just relieved you, but it didn't solve the problem. Maybe, after you relieved yourself, you can incorporate um, changes in the way you study. You can manage your time, or you can set boundaries na parang kunyari, hanggang 3 p.m., mag, uh, 2.30 to 3 p.m., maglalaro ako or ano. And then after that, mag-aaral na ako. So that it can prevent you from experiencing more stress later on. And that would have a lasting impact, <coughs> excuse me, compared to just relieving yourself palagi. Okay, if that if, if you get what I mean, Angela, no? Parang ganon. So it's okay. Uh, hindi ako kay AJ, okay lang kumain ng masarap. <laughs> But I also encourage you to go to the root cause of the concern and the stress and deal it right away. So that you don't have to, you know, um, resort to um, relieve relieving strategies lang. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much. And I think yes. that's the last question po. So at this point in time, I now give you back to our uh, Master of Ceremony, Sir Rodel, Baby Rodel. Take it away, sir. Thank you very much, Sir Jerry, for moderating our open forum today for this webinar. Before we close today's Mental Health Awareness Virtual Forum, may we take this opportunity to award our keynote speaker for her scholarly notes shared to us most especially in this trying time. May I have the pleasure to read the content of the Certificate of Recognition. Republic of the Philippines, Department of Education, Region 1, Schools Division of Lawag City, Ilocos Norte College of Arts and Trades, School ID 300373. Certificate of Recognition is awarded to Sharid Shani B. Aguilar, Registered Psychometrician, Registered Guidance Counselor. In grateful acknowledgement of her active role as a resource speaker during the Mental Health Awareness Virtual Forum, organized by the Locos Norte College of Arts and Trades on September 18, 2021 through a virtual platform as part of the 2021 Brigada Escuela with the theme Bayanihan sa Paaralan, held from August 3 to September 30, 2021. Given this 18th day of September 2021 at Lawag City, Philippines. Signed, Mark Joseph D. Pastor, Master Teacher 2, Coordinator, Brigada Escuela 2021, 
Also signed, Shirley C. Agsunod, school principal for overall supervising official Brigada Escuela 2021. Again, thank you to our keynote speaker, Sharid Shandi B. Aguilar, a registered and licensed psychometrician and registered guidance counselor. To finally close our virtual seminar today, here's to deliver the closing remarks. Please welcome Mr. Godfredo Goidiamano, Master Teacher 2 and the Chairman of the School Disaster Management Committee. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend our, on behalf of the uh, Brigada Escuela SDRR team of INCAT in particular and the uh, INCAT Brigada Escuela 2021-2022 in general. Our grateful appreciation to our resource speaker, Ma'am Shared Shandi Aguilar who did not hesitate to accept our invitation as our resource speaker for today's webinar. To our Brigada Escuela Chairperson, Mr. Joseph Pastor, for guiding us. The Brigada Escuela SDRR team, SDRRN team, in making this webinar a success. I believe that uh, if we all work together, cooperate with each other, our progress amidst this pandemic will be a great success, even if we are faced with multifarious problems. Again, our many thanks to all. Good day and happy weekend. Uh, before I for, forget, our speaker is uh, the daughter of our very own co-teacher, Mr. Edgar Aguilar. Uh, and Sir Edgar Aguilar is also a member of the uh, SDRRM team. And thank you also, sir, for the... Uh, opportunity of working with you as member of the SDRRM team. Again, thank you and good day. Thank you very much, Sir Goiti. To end, ladies and gentlemen, let me also share to you a thought to ponder. A healthy mind will help you find your way through life from birth through childhood, through teenage years, adulthood, and into older age. Always remember, well-being can mean different things to different people, but some common features include having a sense of purpose, feeling good and functioning well, having control in your life and the options to change things if necessary, as well as achieving goals you set for yourself. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Baby Rodel Sabino Ramos Nakiwag and Kodos to all of you who shared a moment for another incredible and worthwhile conduct of 2021 Brigada Escuela. Goodbye and God bless us all. <laughs>